Hello chaps, welcome to John Robson Guitar Tuition once again. As always, I do hope you're well. Now then, today we're asking an important question. Is it coil tap or coil split? I ask this because this week I was literally inundated with an email from someone who I think must have been born with the caps lock key permanently switched on. Hey asshole, oh no dick about guitar. Well, I do know how to spell it, which is a start. Why us say coil tap? It's not coil tap, it's coil split. Or call yourself a guitar tetcher, but or don't even know what coil split is, or fucking prick, or should be tacking off YouTube with a stupid fat bald head talking shit, fuck up. Yeah, I mean, is it just me, or does the poor lad need to get out the house a bit more often? Anyway, yes, I suppose he raises a point. Um, I'll give him that. There is some debate about whether you call the action of turning off one coil of a humbucking pickup to make it into a single coil pickup, do you call it coil tapping or coil splitting? I've always called it coil tapping I'm afraid and the reason for that is because back in the late 1970s when I was first beginning to learn about guitars and pickups and stuff like that, a lot of my knowledge came from a well-thumbed DiMaggio brochure that I had. Uh, it was full of gorgeous pictures of gorgeous guitars with their pickups in. And if we just take a look at it now, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. If I could just draw your attention to Exhibit A, you will see that towards the bottom of the first paragraph on the left-hand side of the page, DiMaggio themselves refer to the practice of turning one coil of a humbucking pickup off to create a single coil type sound as coil tapped. If we then look at Exhibit B from a later DiMaggio advert for the dual sound humbucking pickup, once again it is referred to as coil tapping. So there you go, if DiMaggio are happy to say coil tap then so am I to be honest. Another reason why that's the term I use is because that's the one I was taught at college. Back in the 80s I studied to be a Merchant Navy radio officer, here's a picture of me in uniform. One of the topics that we covered was inductors, that's just coils of wire to you and me. And there are many applications aside from guitar pickups which use inductors and there are many occasions where you need multiple coils of wire connected together and wound on a common magnetic core where you need to switch on or off one of those um, coils, one or more of those coils. And that was taught to me as coil tapping. So there you go. I think more than anything else it's just a, a case of language evolving over time. Back in I think 2000-2001 when I got my first computer and internet connection the um, phone company who were the internet service provider at the time gave me a massive five megabytes of web space to do with as I pleased. So what I did was I used a, a program called Qt FTP to upload important files, documents, photographs, that kind of thing uh, to that web space in case they got accidentally deleted. Nowadays we call that backing up to the cloud. Back then it was called uploading to the internet because the internet already had a name. It was called the internet. Nowadays apparently, I'm, I must have missed the memo, nowadays you're supposed to call it the cloud. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention when that was sent round. Another one actually, shall we talk about a tremolo arm? Yes, I know, it's a vibrato, but Leo Fender got mixed up. He called the tremolo on his amps vibrato and the vibrato device on his guitars a tremolo. And we were quite happily using the term tremolo arm for decades. Then, in the mid-80s, you know, I read a guitar magazine where someone was talking about this thing called a whammy bar. To me, it sounded like some chocolate-coated, sugar-encrusted, honeycomb, nougat gloop made by Cadbury's that would probably send you off on a massive sugar rush. But no, apparently it was just the latest trendy term for a tremolo arm. So there you go. And of course, the granddaddy of them all is this one. Can you tell me what this object is called? You said a toilet, didn't you? The correct answer is, of course, it is a lavatory. The reason why we use the term toilet to refer to a lavatory is all down to the British Railway Network, would you believe? 
back in the golden age of steam um, I'm thinking sort of brief encounter you know Trevor Howard Celia Johnson that sort of era the little compartment on a train back then where you would go to relieve yourself should the need arise contained not only a lavatory but a little hand wash basin where you could hygienically clean yourself once you'd finished this basin was known as a toilet and because of the button down uptight squeamish british attitude towards all things lavatorial the sign on the door would read toilet hence the fact that uh, the word toilet has become synonymous with lavatory um, you know, I mean, I suppose it's no different really to referring to a room with no bath in it as a bathroom. Um, so, there you go. Language changes over time. So, please, can we just all get along and let's have no more expletive filled, irate, monosyllabic emails simply because I'm not happening to use the latest, current, trendy terminology for something. I'm sure we'll all get on a, lo a lot better as a result. And with that, I'll bid you all a good day and see you all next time, where we're going to be taking a look at the fantastic guitar style of a certain Mr. Brian May. That's a good one. You don't want to miss it. See you then, folks.